somebody, uh, in the, again in another article, described uh, the whole as symbolic of the spiritual hole that people have dug for themselves. Uh, and uh, I was wondering if you had any reaction to that, or whether you feel that uh, people dig a hole for themselves. Um, I, I think he tends to withhold his conversation if he doesn't know you until he knows you a little bit. And then, if he feels comfortable and likes you, he'll talk. Sometimes if he harbors some reservations, then he won't. Well, with me, uh, he waves at my car and tries very hard to, to stop me and, and, you know, make sure that I, that I can't uh, say I didn't see him. And then uh, if I stop, he uh, gives me a painted rock. He'll signal someone and then quickly write uh, some kind of Arabic or some symbol, some Buddhist symbol on a little stone and give it to the person as a gift or a a gesture of friendship, and that's usually the introduction. Like I said, he just does the, are you okay, are you okay, type of thing, and uh, he doesn't really say, are you okay, I'll just give you a thumbs up, and sort of very emphatically. No, not my first um, answer to that would be no. He's unpredictable. He does have I know he must have a little circle of friends, people that he does talk, because I see him often at the library talking to people, but I think it's pretty, it's unpredictable to know when he'll talk to me. Often he won't say a word, and sometimes he will say something, so that's even unpredictable. No, I can't, pre I couldn't predict mm -hmm. who he would say hello to or start talking to. It, talking to anyone, even people that he likes, uh, it depends on if he's into the non-talking mode. If he's not into talking, he'll stand there and make gestures, but he, he won't talk to you. There was quite a, a to-do in town about parking spaces at the bottom of Old Forge Road, which is near where Mark lives. Uh, the way I understand it, um, he dug a large hole somewhere, and wouldn't tell people why he did it. Yeah, I just heard he did it with a spoon. He just, he started digging somewhere that he wasn't really supposed to dig, and he started digging it with a spoon. Lo and behold, in the middle of this argument, miraculously, one day, this huge hole appears where, in, where was once a parking space, one of these coveted parking spaces. Mark had, we all wonder at Mark's sudden strength, how he could have dug this hole through heavily compacted soil and rock. Well, the first thing I said to him, I said, how did you dig it so symmetrical? It was a perfectly round, beautiful hole. I think about three, three and a half feet deep. Perfectly round. I mean, even if you put a, a, a compass with a string, it would be hard to, to dig it. That I couldn't believe he had done it so perfectly. You know, it was nice. It was a nice hole. Is it true that you used a spoon to dig the hole? I think around the whole hole situation, he wasn't talking much because he didn't know maybe the reporter who was interviewing him. Did they arrest you for digging the hole? As I recall, he was arrested on some minor charge, perhaps trespassing or um, some minor case of vandalism, maybe. And we, many of us in town, were highly incensed that he was put in jail. And the reason given, I, the judge was perturbed because Mark refused to give his name or to give his last name. I guess he was known as Mark, and he refused to state his name. And for that, he was thrown in jail. 
I've never seen him do anything that would frighten anybody or um, cause a disturbance other than the hall. And that wasn't a terrible thing. It was, uh, I suppose it might have been dangerous if you, you backed your car up into it, if you accidentally were drunk and were walking down that, that particular road, which no one really uses, and you fell into the hall. Mark does, I'm, I'm reluctant to say this, but Mark does add something to my life. Um, uh, he, you know, he's, I think he's, he stands out more as a personality and, and interacts more personally and, and I think with more goodwill than most people in the town. He'll also keep confidences, too. Sometimes some, he'll want to tell you something, but he can't because he promised not to. That's the most tantalizing secret. Nothing where there was something. Uh, it being inevitably have, having something to do with um, uh, perhaps a, a grave or, or death, because that's what generally people dig that kind of hole for. What I find amazing about this situation is that 10 years later, the hole is still there, and nobody has filled it in, and I don't think they should. I mean, I just think maybe this hole has some life of its own, as perhaps Mark implied that it did, that it had some spiritual significance being around. I don't know anything about Buddhism, but maybe it's like a symbol of one life, one love, as the Rastafarians say. You know, we all came from the same source, we're all one people, stop fighting, and who needs a parking space anyway kind of thing. I haven't got a clue how he lives. I know where he lives. I've been in his house once or twice, and I think it's even more discombobulated than my house. Um, I've wondered, but then, Mark is the kind of guy, he's so likable that I wouldn't want to, pry into his personal life, like, does the Buddhist monastery pay his bills? Is he on disability? Did he make so much money on Wall Street as a lawyer that he has a bank account somewhere? Who knows? I, I think it's more fun not to know. I haven't got a clue. I really don't know. I've heard nothing factual on how this man lives day in and day out.